What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Apple Studio Ultra and Max editions. We've got them, they're out, but they're weird and you might wanna take a closer look. So let's jump in and talk about it. Real quick, at the top of this video, I just wanna mention, uh, you probably noticed that I've not posted a video in a week or so for two reasons. Number one, it was my birthday. Uh, and I wanted to take my birthday and just kind of enjoy it. But also I have gone down just a deep rabbit hole of really reconfiguring a lot of the way that I make videos in anticipation of making more of them and just generally being more organized with my work as my portrait photography work becomes busier and busier. I wanna continue making these videos, but I have to do them in a way that is efficient and organized. So that has been why I've been away for a little bit. And if you're interested in my process, there's a little bit of AI, a little bit of folder management, a little bit of Lightroom plugin goodness in there. If you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments. And if you're a member of the channel, which I'll talk about at the end, just know that you would get any and all resources that I've created in that process for free. So let's get into talking about these Apple announcements, specifically about the Mac Studio. So Apple revealed the entire lineup it's got two different chip generations, the M4 Max, which is from the latest M4 series, and the M3 Ultra, which is from the previous generation, the M3 generation. And this is the first time that Apple has done kind of a mixed family in releasing a product generation. This has sparked a lot of questions <laughs> about why uh, and how and why. Now, pre-orders are live and the launch is official on March 12th. So if you're seeing this on the 11th or the 12th, it might already be out there. I'll put some links down below for those. Now, whether you go for the M4 Max or the M3 Ultra, both of these are gonna offer just amazing performance. You know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, that I am a huge fan of Apple M-series silicon. I run an M1 Max in my 14-inch MacBook Pro. I absolutely love that processor. It has done a phenomenal job for me now for three or four years. And I stand by these processors. I think they're phenomenal. But the decision between which one, the M3 Ultra or the M4 Max, it's gonna decide kind of on your workflow needs. So let's kind of break it into categories because there are specific differences, kind of considerable ones, between these two chip generations. So we have to kind of ask the questions, why do two different generations with one product release? Um, you know, there are some folks online that I have read that are saying they're, they're holding on to the M4 Ultra because they're gonna end up putting it in the Mac Pro. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Um, I think at this point, the Mac Pro is kind of a Mac Studio with PCI slots. It's expensive to build, and I don't know how many of them they're actually selling. Um, and there's other people that just think that this is a way to balance out supply constraints, and that we're never actually gonna see an M4 Ultra at all. So to understand why Apple might skip the M4 Ultra entirely, or at least in this generation, let's dive into three specific reasons. And let's start with the core technology behind the Ultra chips that Apple has been making. So the secret sauce in Apple's Ultra chips is in their Ultra Fusion connector. Other manufacturers use things that are similar, right? They'll call them fabric, that type of thing. But basically it's the ability to take two Max chips and glue them together, right? But it's the glue that we're talking about because you glue them together and you get one Ultra chip. That's how they've been doing it. Really, that's how you get the Max out of the Pro and the Pro out of the vanilla. Apple's doing a lot of gluing, right? The M1 Ultra, which was in the first studio, was just two Max chips glued together. Same for the M2, but they're not gonna do that with the M4. So they've confirmed that the M4 Max that we saw starting with the MacBook Pros doesn't have an Ultra Fusion connector. They, they didn't put it on there. It, it literally just doesn't have the capacity. So unless they come up with some other way to merge these chips together, you we're never gonna see an Ultra out of the M4 generation. Now they could still technically put an M4 Max or two M4 Maxes on a single package or like a dual socket configuration and then use some other joiner to put them, I don't know. But obviously that's gonna be far less efficient than just putting those together. And then that would also eliminate the capacity to put potentially two of those Ultra chips on one board or one package, which is kind of what we would see in a Pro model. So basically, unless they do something 
that we've never seen before. The other reason that we might not see an M4 Ultra is because Apple has said they're not gonna make one for every generation. They've been pretty clear. Not every chip generation is going to include an Ultra variant. And it looks like when they taped out the M4, they knew that in advance. And so instead of even leaving themselves the opportunity to do it down the road, they literally just said, nope, we're not gonna spend any engineering time or fabrication resources to put this technology on the chip. In interviews with reporters and certain online media personalities, uh, not including myself, uh, they've made kind of an unusual announcement that the Ultra line just isn't guaranteed. And what's odd about that is that Honestly, Apple normally doesn't kind of open up the kimono to talk about stuff like that. And they made that announcement right before we got this announcement of the mixed generation Mac Studio. So obviously they were kind of laying the groundwork for this release. But what's interesting is that they have been super deliberate in their approach. And they're kind of redefining the product segmentation that we've come to expect out of Apple products using Apple Silicon or at least they're redefining their strategy because up until now, it's been pretty easy to estimate what we would expect to see. You could literally take an M, M whatever max chip and say, okay, it's got this score, double that, uh, cut off 20% for efficiency headroom, and this is what we would see with an Ultra, where's my Ultra? But it also kind of has to do with what the Ultra processors mean to Apple in kind of their product ecosystem. Because remember, the number one product that they sell is the iPhone, which does not have one of these chips. And while the ecosystem definitely like trickles down, they just don't sell a lot of Mac products that require ultra processors. So Bloomberg's Mark Gurman uh, gave kind of another reason uh, in a recent Power On newsletter that creating the M4 Ultra and effectively doubling the M4 Max while also including that connector on the M4 Max, even if it wasn't going to be built into an Ultra, would add costs and production challenges, right? We don't know what in the production or the development of the M4 processor, specifically the M4 Max, could have just created issues for them including the fabric. And instead of spending time and effort on it, they just said, well, no, we can use an existing version that has fabric and it'll run great. German also mentioned, like I just said, that the Ultra chips, like the Studio, they represent a very small portion of Apple's overall desktop sales, let alone their overall sales in general. If they had to invest millions into producing a product that is pretty limited in its demand, uh, that really doesn't make a lot of sense. And you can feel however you wanna feel about Apple. They don't normally make decisions that don't make business sense. Unless we're talking about Apple intelligence and the fact that it's terrible and that they're pushing it off into the future and that everyone is pissed, but that's a different video. But we do have a new Ultra chip. We have the M3 Ultra alongside the M4 Max. And the question is, okay, well, then how do they stack up? And so we have benchmark tests and some interesting information to go through. Let's start with GPU performance. So the high-end M3 Ultra, which has 80 cores, 80 GPU cores, uh, scored 260K in a metal benchmark test, compared to the M4 Max at about 187K. So the M3 is about 40% faster, even though it's from the previous generation. And if you compare it to the M2 Ultra, which is really its main competitor here, it's 16% faster. So without a doubt, this is Apple's fastest GPU. When we move to CPU performance, eh, the gap, it's not as, it's not as big. The multi-core performance is about 8% better in the M3 Ultra over the M4 Max. And the M4 Max actually offers better single core performance than the M3 Ultra. And that's because honestly, moving from the M2 and M3 families to the M4, this has been the first generation where Apple has pretty clearly shown a significant boost in overall performance, leading folks like myself who are still in the M1 generation to finally start looking potentially at upgrading for the first time. But if you've got workflows that require high clock speeds on individual threaded tasks, then the M4 is actually a better bet for you than the M3. So who wins the, the battle? Who wins the, the performance crown? Um, well, it depends. I mean, for most users, you're gonna be looking at the M4 Max. And obviously, if you're looking for something that is mobile or quieter or lower power or has a lower power requirement, obviously the M4 Max is gonna be better for you. But if you are looking at graphic intensive workloads and heavy multi-core 
CPU workloads, 3D rendering, video production, that sort of thing, the M3 Ultra is gonna be better for you, especially if in those scenarios, time is money. You gotta get the project out, you gotta get it done fast, you can't wait for things to render or process, you just gotta get it done. The M3 Ultra is gonna do the trick for you because honestly that cost is gonna make sense over time. Okay, so that brings us to kind of looking to the future. <laughs> Uh, it seems pretty unlikely that we're gonna see an M4 Ultra. And we haven't really seen much in the way of what we would get in the M5, or because M4 is based on the same ARM V9 that the A18 and A18 Pro are based on, which is what we have in the iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Pro. And the difference between the 16 and the 16 Pro is uh, clock speed, memory, caches. There's no actual architectural difference between those two chips. And correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong here, but I think this would be the first year where we could potentially see an M5 processor alongside its A19 equivalent, right? M5 and A19 would effectively be uh, siblings. And so we wouldn't really know in that case what the performance improvement would be in advance because we'd kind of get it all at the same time. And we wouldn't know if they would reintroduce the Ultra Fusion connector because Apple wouldn't put that on an A-series chip anyway. But one thing that we do know is that Apple's chips are based, at least in some part, on the ARM architecture. They license those designs. Now, they, they modify them heavily as they include them in their processors, but we can kind of look at that as a potential for a roadmap. Most recently, last year, we got the ARM version 9.5, but normally Apple has these chips taped out at least three or four years in advance. So if we look at the 9.3 or 9.4 versions, the 9.3 version brought in improved acceleration for specialized workloads like crypto and a scalable vector execution unit to improve large data sets. Maybe think local LLMs. Again, the Apple intelligence video is coming. 9.4 brings improvement to memory management and smoothing out performance. And 9.5 really improves efficiency and kind of refines the entire process, which to be quite honest, I don't think we would see. So maybe we see 9.3, maybe 9.4, probably not. But if we look at 9.3 as a potential baseline for an M5 and an A19, the fact that it does vector scaling, that it has improvements in kind of, it, it has improvements in the way that it efficiently handles and that it does have improvements in how it more efficiently handles kind of vector based calculations for large data sets. I could definitely see that as potentially being the reason why we're not gonna be seeing improved onboard LLMs for a new Siri until an iPhone 17 and an M5 processor. But it definitely signals Apple's strategy with their desktop chips. They're skipping ultra variants in certain generations. They're kind of prioritizing better supply chain, or maybe they're making room for upgrading the Mac Pro lineup. Because if they reintroduce Ultra Fusion in the next version of the M processor, then that would indicate that we're definitely getting an ultra chip and it would significantly improve performance and resource. That would definitely allow them to potentially align that chip for the release of another product like a more powerful Mac Studio or a Mac Pro. So that's it on the details regarding the M3 Ultra versus M4 Max debate. In the overall conclusion of which ones should you buy, it depends on your workload. Again, if you are a working professional doing a lot of graphic intensive work, the additional GPUs on the M3 Ultra are not gonna hurt. If you're maybe a solo creator, solopreneur like me, I think the Max processor is gonna do just fine for you, especially if that opens you up to mobility like a MacBook Pro, as opposed to being kind of tied to a desk with a studio product. But again, your mileage may vary and it's gonna depend on you. Now, if this is the kind of thing that you're into and you want more information like this, you can start by becoming a member of the channel. I've got two membership tiers available. I'll put the various benefits here on the side. Thank you so much to those who have already joined. I am still doing my Instagram giveaway, so I will put a link to that video there, down below as well as up in the cards. Another way that you can support the channel is by clicking on my Amazon gear lists down below. I've got a gear list for everything that I use here in the studio, everything I use when I'm out as a paid portrait photographer, everything I use when I'm out as an adventure photographer making videos for this channel, and I've got my 2025 guide and essential gear list. 
if you were getting started in photography and content creation. Those are affiliate links. So if you use those and you buy anything, I do get a little bit from that. That's an easy way to support the channel. And a free way that you can support the channel is by just hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe button, turning on the bell so that you're notified when I post new videos, although those videos are early when you're a member. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.